Okay, so it's been about five days since Tilly was injured and Kevin was right. She ended up getting better. Her leg wasn't as bad, the swelling was down, it wasn't hot anymore. So the vet said as long as she's healing, we'll just hold off on the x-ray, we'll just wait and see if it heals up on its own. And um, the next day, um, this is what happened. Tilly, you have perfect timing, don't you? <laughs> oh, is he singing you a love song? Who is it, Zora Winston? Winston. Winston. So I asked the vet and she said, it helps that the buckling is little, that it's, breeding's not gonna really bother her too much, and if she wants to, we'll go ahead and breed her. I think her leg's gonna heal and she'll be okay, so we'll give it a let's little go. We'll give her leg a little extra support for breeding. If she keeps it on, I don't know about that. Tilly might chew it off. Um. Okay, you're good, uh, Tilly. Just for breathing. Just to make it a little more stable. Guys, Karen has been sleeping a ton lately. I see. Yeah, look, she's asleep right now again. <laughs> she's sleepy. Asleep. <laughs> she's like, I don't know what she's her deal. Got three kids. Come on, guys. <laughs> Come on, Tilly. Cool. Here you she's, go. She's in there. What's in it? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't really show it on camera because YouTube doesn't like that. But we'll just go by Lydia's facial expressions. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so my dad made a playground for the goats. And they love it. Do you like your new playground? They're all sleeping up here. Hi. Is it fun? Sisters are up here. We need a top scratcher, a top of broom yeah. scratcher for her. Well, that was pretty quick. Tilly bred <laughs> pretty much instantly with Winston. And I think Tilly's leg is gonna be okay. That was a close one. Stinking Doris. We're still really mad at her. She's still in pig prison right now. But we're gonna have to figure out a long-term solution for having the goats not kill each other here. So Tilly is bred, Tilly is on the mend, but we noticed that exact same day, Doris was in heat. And actually that could explain why she was so aggressive because when they come into heat, they can just have all sorts of hormones going on. But with that being said, if I can be honest, this has been a problem with Doris for a long time. Those of you that have been watching us for a long time have noticed that when we first brought Doris and her half-sister Mabel home, they were both really aggressive. Mabel was even more aggressive than Doris, if you can believe that. And she had it out for Willow and would always try to attack Willow and part of the reason we sold Mabel was because she was tough to get pregnant and so I thought maybe she was just infertile so we sold Mabel like two years ago and now she's been a mom and she lives on a farm up in the mountains and but when it comes to Doris the reason why I kept Doris is that she was easy to be bred she was easy to milk she did okay with milking yeah she was aggressive but we felt like we could control that with like how we fed them we would usually feed everybody else first and then when they were done then we'd let Doris Doris out and Doris could eat but really none of it has like fixed the problem and Doris continues like you've seen to be really aggressive honestly as much as I love Doris her personality with humans and how easy she is to milk I draw the line at a goat that is going to injure the other goats and now I worry about Willow getting hurt or the baby's getting hurt stuff like that so I have made the decision to rehome Doris I know some people might be really sad by this and feel really bad that they're gonna miss her but honestly when you have a farm you have to make tough decisions all the time so the plan is since Doris is in heat I figured I might as well breed her with Zorro so she has more value to the potential new owner because one thing I do know about Doris is she's very sweet with her babies I know she'll be sweet with them and take care of them and she won't bully them so if somebody is interested in starting a herd and having Doris and two or three of her baby goats that could potentially be a very peaceful 
heard. Also, there's the potential since Zoro is pulled, which means he doesn't have any horns, the babies could be pulled as well, and the milking lines could be improved through Zoro, the personality could be improved through Zoro, so there's a lot of potential for those babies to be good quality. She's not being mean to him, so he is safe. Uh, she likes him right now, at least. Hopefully we can find a happy solution to this crazy thing that's happening that I didn't expect to happen this year. We get a lot of gifts from you guys, and we don't show every gift that we open, but here's a fun sampling of the stuff we kind of get. Are you doing that one first? Ooh. Ooh. Fancy. It says thank you. Oh, this is this is the card. This is the card that came with that present right there in that in that box. Oh, this oh, present. Yeah. Let's just okay. put that open. Oh, a box within a box. What does the box say? <laughs> what is it? <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh, that is so funny. Thin. That is so cute. <laughs> Is it like a brooch? It's Hermione. Yeah, it's, got it's a, a pin. pin on the back. Is that for me to wear, or is yeah. that for yeah. Kevin it's to wear? For anyone <laughs> to wear. Oh, or Hermione, maybe. This is from Morgan. It is a fancy patio misting. Ooh. Oh, for we the milking this. station. We do need that. It's still hot outside. We've never got one of those before. We really need to. That That's is amazing. Comes with a bunch of zip ties and everything. <laughs> Set it up. We also get a lot of drawings and letters, and it's a lot of fun to look at those. So thank you. Well, I don't mind the slow down anymore. Well, it's the end of the summer and you would think that everything would be dried up in the garden, but we actually have quite a few things that are still popping out fruits and veggies for us. We've still got cantaloupe, Armenian cucumbers, and Asian long beans, which are basically like a really long green bean. So tonight, we're gonna actually cook with just one of these. The rest we'll eat off throughout the day. These Asian long beans are insane. Sometimes they're hard to spot. Man, look at that. <laughs> That's a long green bean. So I planted two pumpkin seeds over here back in July. And we're slowly crawling out. I wonder how far it's going to go. Hopefully not all the way to that fence, but I don't think so. We also have a volunteer tree from our neighbor's yard. We've taken this one. A couple years ago, we let this little sapling grow up tall. And it's from that big tree right there. And the goats love to trim this bottom piece, but so far it's starting to kind of flesh out on the top, so it's going to be cool to have a nice big tree over here. Everything is overgrown, but we're going to do a big cleanup this week and get everything nice and ready for fall planting. My three mulberry trees have grown quite a bit in the summer. Uh, this is where we were growing the corn, so we need to take that weed cloth up and kind of trim this grass down and decide what we're going to do over here in this spot. I feel like there's something good to do over here. Like, I'm just saving, I'm waiting for a good idea. We'll see. Now, one of these already dried up, so I'm gonna save these seeds inside, and we'll use them to plant next summer. Now I'm gonna keep them safe in that little pod so I don't lose them. So I had on my mind to make a really good pad thai. The only problem is I don't really know how to cook pad thai. So I'm going to kind of use a recipe slash use what I have on hand and hopefully I won't get too vilified in the comments about this mishmash of pad thai dinner I'm making. So I'll start by dicing up a bunch of veggies. Right now I've got a green pepper, some carrots, and then I'll dice up these Asian long beans. I know I'm gonna use some limes in the recipe and I'll go ahead and chop up some garlic as well along with some ginger. I don't know, that sounded good. <laughs> and then I'll dice up a little bit of onion as well. Okay, so fun fact, I have a really hard time not pronouncing onion like onion. And that's because uh, growing up, that's how my mom would say it and that's how my grandma says it. 
and that's how my great grandma says it and my great grand anyway it's just something in my family that we've said and i looked it up and some people in some parts of the country do pronounce an onion like onion with a little g in there i don't know why so every time i say it it's so hard for me to not say onion so um just so you guys know i'm, re I'm working really hard trying to say onion which sounds totally bizarre to me all right so for the sauce i'm going to mix together some soy sauce some sesame seed oil some rice vinegar some sriracha lots of different things to try to get this to be kind of a spicy nutty sauce oh also yes i put tahini in it as well tahini is kind of like a sesame seed paste so it's kind of like a nut butter but not as strong as something like peanut butter I also added some brown sugar to this. So now I've got that all mixed up. Now we're gonna start cooking the veggies. It's sort of like cooking a ratatouille. You just kind of cook one at a time until you kind of get everything cooked equally. I know I want the onions to be crunchy, so I'll cook those last. We'll go ahead and start with the carrots and then the long beans. I threw in some chili flakes in there so we could get the heat kind of up on this. Then after those have cooked a little bit, I'll add the onions and then the garlic as well as the ginger. Now pad thai normally has some sort of scrambled egg in it, so we're gonna throw that in the pot and start to cook that as well. Although I realized I probably should have cooked the shrimp first so that there wasn't this kind of cakey uh, egg stuff on the bottom of the pan. But alas, we have to learn from our mistakes, right? So then I finally added the shrimp and then I added the bean sprouts and mix it together. I also cooked some rice noodles and then added the sauce to the noodles and then finally the shrimp. And doesn't look like much right now, but when you put it all together in a bowl with crushed peanuts, some cilantro, and then lime, oh my gosh, this was pretty amazing. I'll post a real recipe in the description and you can try it out. Okay guys, I have the best news. I just found somebody who is going to take Doris and it's like the perfect situation. This person we found, uh, he actually has already a bunch of goats. He has bigger goats. So as you guys know, Doris does not usually fight with Luna because she's bigger than her. And so bigger goats would be much better herd mates. And then also he runs kind of a side therapy business. So Doris is gonna be able to go and get all the love from humans <laughs> that she wants, which she loves. So I'm really excited about this. I've been kind of bummed that she's not gonna be in our herd anymore, but I definitely want a more peaceful situation and safer situation for everybody. So yeah, I'm really excited. So I think this is gonna work out. We're still working out all the details. He's gonna come by this Sunday and check her out. We're gonna talk about different things and uh, I think she's gonna go to her new home. Pretty sad, but I'm actually glad that we found such a good situation for her. I was worried that um, it wasn't gonna work out. Also, if the breeding with Zoro took and she's pregnant, then she can have babies and keep those babies and raise them up and stuff. So that'll be really fun for her. So our farm is gonna look a little bit different without Doris here, but the more I've thought about it, the more I'm okay with it. I think it'll be a good situation for her. Oh, there's a scorpion. Oh, there's a scorpion. Where? Oh, that's scary. That was so scary. Where's He's down it? there. Oh, that's scary. Dad, come get it. Help. Come get this scorpion, Kevin. Help us. Does that have babies on its back? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think it did. There's an ant right there next to it. Down at the corner, on the bottom on the left back? corner. On the back? Gotta go fast. So Tilly really wanted to go back in. So we let her in with Winston and they've been in there pretty much the whole day. So we're gonna let her out so that we can milk her and do the evening chores. I don't know, Liddy, they're on opposite sides of the pen, so. <laughs> Maybe their love time is Are you over. done with Winston now? Oh, well, I think she's done. <laughs> Come on. Oh, she ran. She okay, ran. all done. Hey, Tilly, you kinda gotta go fast here. You gotta go fast, you gotta run. You gotta, you gotta go, you gotta go. There you go. Come on, let's go get milked. Oh, she's using that leg, yay. 
Right. A ghost heat can last anywhere from a few hours to a few days. So we just go off our goat's behavior. Are they interested in the bug? Do they want to be with them? And we keep them in for about that long and then let them out. Some cases we leave them in for a whole month because they're not very good at showing us if they're in heat. But Tilly's pretty good. So we're communicating. There's Zorro on one side and there's Winston on the other. Oh, so they want to be together. They're talking. Which one's your favorite goat to milk? Um, I think Tilly's good. Tilly? Yeah, even though she has tiny little teats, she's still, <laughs> she's really nice. Yeah, well it's gotten a lot better though. Uh, she still throws a fit when she doesn't <laughs> get food. Yeah. All right, little Hi, check Hi, Winnie. Hello. Is it still on there? Just yep. a little bit. There All right. Do you see it? Oh, there it is. Wool too. That's our herd herd name. And then on the other side, this is the letter of the year and then the number birth order she was in for all the goats on the farm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. oh, sorry, Tatum. That one, she was M1 because she was the first one that was born. Yep. Okay, let's do the other side. She's so sweet. She holds still. Way better. She holds yeah. so still. Oh, I'm so, sorry. That kind of hurt. That kind of hurt. She's getting pretty wide. Big fat twinsies. Just maybe six Her more weeks. Really getting big. Looking really big. Getting close. Even though Tilly has tiny teats, Ethan likes to milk her the most. Mm -hmm. Okay, Doris, last one. Look at honey, both Luna and Stella come over here like we're gonna give them extra treats. Yeah. I'll yeah. give I'll give Luna a treat since she's And Stella. No, Stella <laughs> needs to lose weight, so no <laughs> treat for Stella. Now we've got two. <laughs> Tatum is being a bad influence on Winnie. They're never not going to be in this feeder, I swear. <clears throat> well, so far, uh, Zoro has not been uh, vocal until all these ladies are in heat. And now he's crazy loud. What's wrong, Zoro? Huh? I love how he's a chocolate color. Not, n not really black, just more chocolate. It's going to bring some interesting colors. Thanks for watching our video guys. If you want to watch the video where Doris first came to our farm, click right here.